Oh, hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for this chance to gather together. Let's worship the Lord, shall we? And we're going to stand up and sing, stand up, stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall be lead, till every fall is vanquished and Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call obey, for to the mighty conflict in this his glorious day. He that are brave now serve him against unnumbered foes. Let courage rise with danger and strength to strength oppose. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you Ye dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor and watching unto prayer. Where calls the voice of duty, be never wanting there. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. The strife will not be long. This day the noise of battle, the next the victor song. To him that overcometh, the crown of life shall be. He with the King of glory shall reign eternally. stand up for Jesus, and he'll stand up for us in heaven. Amen. Father, thank you for this chance to gather tonight. Help us, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth, to be grateful for all that you've done. Teach us, Lord, how to really praise you from our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Oh, let's praise him, shall we? He has made me glad. Oh, I'm so glad to know the Lord. I know you are too. His gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter His courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. Oh, He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart, I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he 
has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. Amen. Didn't the, David use the word glad? Oh, he did. He was grateful and he praised the Lord. I think he used the word glad. We'll check it out. Hallelujah. Yeah. Shine. Oh, Jesus, shine in me, please. Shine, Jesus, shine. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the dark. It's shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free. By the truth you now bring us, shine on me, shine on me, shine Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory, praise, Spirit, praise, set Praise going in you, won't it? Hallelujah. Lord, so glorify, glorify your name, Jesus, and may my life be proving that glory in you. Hallelujah.
thank you, Lord. I want to give credit to uh, the pianist on these recordings, uh, Caleb Brazil. We've been working with him since COVID started and our organist left us and he's been such a blessing. And today I was looking at one of his songs and I saw the first thank you, Caleb, on there. And the second one came from you, Robin. I saw the one that you were so, you were so grateful gotta... for uh, his ministry and and talked about uh, how it's been a blessing to us. And it was good to see your name on that. And wow. thank you for, thanks for saying thank you to Caleb. He certainly deserves so what a blessing he is. Caleb Brazi, if you want to and I do them online. He's got over 500 songs on there, probably close to a thousand, a lot of hymns as well. He's a real blessing. And what Many he's done for us is an incredible, oh, uh, by allowing these, this music to be used. It's, most people don't do that. That's right. Everything is copyrighted, and he just simply gets it for the glory of God. Lord bless him. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a real blessing. Think he's going to be blessed when he gets to heaven? I imagine he'll be up there playing the piano. What do you think? Yeah. Probably going to get the job to play the piano. Yeah. <laughs> Draw me close, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Draw me close to you, Lord. Draw me close to you. Help me know you are near. 
dear to my heart. You're all my all in all, Lord. You're everything. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. so good. God is so faithful. Amen. Oh, gracious Father, thank you. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to come here tonight, and thank you for this privilege to worship with you, to you. We worship you. We praise your name, O oh Lord. Worthy is your name. All oh, glory and honor to you, Father, King of kings and Lord of lords. We love you, Father. We praise your name. Father, we ask tonight that you would bless these people who have come out. May they receive an extra measure of your blessing tonight, Father. We ask that you would touch them, strengthen them, encourage them, 
and give them new manna tonight, Father. Feed them from your word. Thank you, Father. For all those who are listening, may they receive a blessing tonight. Bless them with new manna. Strengthen them. We pray for those who are going to be healed tonight, that you they would prepare, be prepared for their healing. We thank you and praise you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We ask you to take over this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 That's exciting. Those who are going to be receiving their healing to be prepared. That can be for you here. That can be for you uh, online, for you on television, and uh, whoever is going to be hearing that. Be ready for your healing. Amen. And uh, we've got uh, time for... Let's see, I think the microphones are in the back, Sadell, if we can get them, we'll get the green mic opened up and have a chance for some testimonies and then some prayer requests, and uh, we will uh, get a chance to praise the Lord. That's our theme for tonight, is praising Him, and I guess that's the theme every night, uh, to praise the Lord. Who's got a testimony of what God is doing? Uh, Ray, I guess Robin's got one up here, we'll get her uh, on the microphone. Well, I wanted to give God the glory, first of all, for children. And we were able to spend time <clears throat> with Katie, Lauren's wife, and the two, her grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. And um, we had Mia and Wyatt during COVID, we did homeschooling. And we had introduced them to Jesus then. And Mia was so, we hadn't seen them probably for about a year because of the COVID, and they were afraid of bringing it to Paul and I and all that. So she was so excited to tell us she was going to, to church, to Sunday school, a little vacation Bible school near their home, and she knew Jesus, and she said, my teacher t says, God bless you and hugs me every time I go home. And I just, there was such joy in her heart, and I just thought, God is good. And Lauren came to know Jesus before he passed. That would be her grandfather. And Katie is going to church with them. Little Baptist church near their home, but it's okay. We're right praising the Lord for that. Hallelujah. Thank Wonderful. you, Lord. Wonderful. Isn't God good to give her them the teacher that would hug them and say, may the Lord bless you? Sweet. Isn't that wonderful? You know, and isn't it wonderful she wanted to tell you? Because she related that. She knew you would re-understand that. So she knows your faith. Good. Who else has a praise report? Sadell. Okay. Um, I just wanted to thank God for um, some prayers I said for some situations at work, like, but God resolved them. Thank you, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. He can, he can resolve things at work too, can he? Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And other stuff that I can't remember, but it was a blessing today. And wow. every day. So many blessings. Wow. So many. And they're blessed to have you that you pray. And uh, need to do it you more. work for an Orthodox Jewish. Yes. And they honor uh, with their holidays and all that. And they really appreciate you. Yes. And they give you the, the uh, Jewish holidays off. And they're, they do. And, they're, and they're really Orthodox. Yes. And some of the yes. Gentile employees complained, not understanding. And so they brought a rabbi or somebody in to explain so the wonderful. significance of it. Huh? Yes, what a blessing. And to, to get counsel from, too, to make sure that. So that was kind of cool. That's nice. wonderful. Yes. God, God bless them. Wonderful. I know. Thank you, Lord. God bless them. What May a they come blessing. to know Yeshua. I know, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, Mr. Barry. Thank you, Lord. Bless him. Yes. Anybody else? Yes, Peg. Want to get one in the back there? Um, I'm just grateful that a couple tests that I had done at the cardiologist came back okay. Good. And um, for prayer requests, I want to mention four people. Leland, who needs a new heart. He's 21. Leland needs a new heart. What happened to his heart? It, they think it's genetic. Okay. Um, Carolyn, one of the bus drivers who's a Christian, has been out of work. Um, for Angela. Wait a minute. I can't write that oh, fast. Carolyn, for, for a job? Or for, she's, she's out of she's work. She's out sick. She's I'm a sick, bus driver, okay. yep. And um, for Angela, for her continuing problems with, you know, her condition because she's a paraplegic. And also for, for Donna Monifo Hansen, that she be healed from cancer. Oh, you know Donna? Yeah. Good. Donna. 
She used to be in our church many years ago. She actually developed her music ministry here. We sent her downstairs to, uh, she wanted to play the, the uh, guitar and uh, we had one of our pastors teach her and then sent her downstairs to lead worship with the children and then she moved on from there. She's been a blessing for many, many years. So, yeah, somebody else, uh, Robin? Yeah, I'd like to lift up the little boy, the little baby. And I know he's on our prayer line, but David Jr., mm -hmm. um, his mom had preeclampsia, and they, they, he was born very early, 28 weeks, I believe. And um, he's in the neonatal mm -hmm. NICU and um, just needs oxygen full time. He's had a blood transfusion, but I know God has a plan for his life. And I want to pray for this little boy. Yeah. Yeah, good. Any other prayer requests or Sam? Thank you. I'd like us to, I want to lift up to the Lord, uh, one of my customers named Brian. I don't know his last name, but the Lord knows who he is. Okay. I did work for him about 15 years ago. His elderly mother is in a nursing home, but Brian, his legs were always swollen. They were like three times the size of a regular thigh or calf and that they were always wrapped. He called me about two months ago for repairs, and on and off I've been going to his house, uh, but I saw one thing. One leg was cut from the base, where he meets the body. So he only had one leg, and he's on this electric wheelchair in the house. And this man, he has such an amazing attitude. He puts me to shame. You know, he's so thankful and so loving all the time, no complaining. And, uh, but this one day when I was there, his other leg, which was very swollen, was constantly bleeding. Nothing he can do until the nurse comes to wrap it up. Well, I didn't go there for about two weeks, and uh, he called me, left me a message at my home, and he said he's in a nursing home for the next two months nearby. Uh, because he, the discovery is an infection in his leg. And he mentioned one more thing. They cut all of his toes on that leg. So this man needs a miracle. And, and also, I would like to raise to the Lord my brother Gus from Greece. He called me this morning, and he called me for counsel. And I just... And I just gave him the word. There is no other counsel. And I just built him up in the word. And I said, do not give in to negative thoughts and fear, but put your trust in the Lord. He knows the Lord, but he needs to be steadfast. And that's my request. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Steadfast in the Lord. All right. Let's so, pray. Oh, I have a praise. So my husband texted me and he said, did you... <laughs> Did you see at Hudson Valley what they have done? Did you see it? Everybody saw it. So we were just praising the Lord. Um, what, happened? what happened? Oh, well, what happened is they have lifted the COVID vaccine mandate for Hudson Valley Community College. Kudos to them. They're a SUNY school. Yeah. Kudos to them. Um, and SUNY is now fighting them, I understand that. So oh, well, I'm sure they would. I knew that would, sure. it would only be a matter of days. Um, hours, right. hours. Good for them. I thought it would be hours. We'll pray for them that they can, so, that they can take a stand. Yes, and let's pray that um, uh, they're in Rensselaer County. Yay. Okay, we know how, why that happened. So let's pray um, that the Lord would protect them and they would be able to stand by it and have what they want at their school. We know that the... Um, vaccine is not effective, and in fact, it's hurting people. And they mm. made people take that who knew they had problems. I didn't take it because I have other issues, and I was afraid because. And now I look back, and I'm like, it's the it's the grace of God that I didn't take it with m my problems. I didn't want to make it worse. So um, it was the risk uh, for me. It was. Um, it was a greater risk for me to take the vaccine than it would be to get the COVID. And God has been so good to me. But, you know, in the last couple of years, we had a couple of bouts of some sickness, and we did what we need to do. And um, I think the fall's coming, and we're probably going to be battling that again. Light up, load up on your vitamin D, your prayer, good foods. Get out, get away from your white flowers and your white sugar, right? Make your own bread, maybe. Do some good things for yourself. Eat some beans. 
And always ask the Lord. That's what I did. My wife said, I'm not taking the vaccine. And I said, well, I'm going to talk to the Lord. And I asked the Lord about the vaccine, and he gave me the indication very strongly not to take it, so I didn't. And then a few months later, I've never shared this before. A few months later, I was not even thinking about the vaccine. I was taking my shoes off after a long, hard day. And he spoke clearly to my heart, not audibly, but so clearly I could see it like a ticker tape. And I said, the vaccine may cause some immune systems to be compromised. And that's all I needed to know. And, and now I'm seeing doctor upon doctor who's coming out against this because of the immune system. Once your immune system is compromised, well, it's going to take a miracle from God to get you back on the right so track. So if you took the vaccine... Go to God. Yes. Ask him. If it's, you, it's his body. If you took you know. the vaccine, we are with you. We are not judging you. A lot of no. my friends and family have taken it. Um, I just gave uh, somebody um, the Dr. Zelenko protocol. Um, I gave my son that. He took that. He was getting better. Um, but you have to build your immune system, especially if you have taken the vaccine. That's right. Okay. So. All right, well, let's pray. Sure. Um, I have Paul on here, Paul Nobly. Father, we thank you so much for these people that we're going to lift up to you tonight. And uh, there's a lot. So I'm going to quickly, I'm going to try to go quickly. If you guys could agree with me, uh, if you feel something, just pray it out right where you are because we need the power of prayer. The Bible says that um, in Isaiah, surely he has borne our griefs, our sicknesses, and carried our sorrows, our pains. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And by his stripes, his wounds, we are healed. Isaiah 53, 4 to 5. We believe that. We believe it is alive for today, right? Sadel, we believe it for today. So, Father, we claim healing right now for Paul, Pastor Paul Anobly. We ask you to touch him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. We claim this healing over him right now. We claim, Lord, that you would heal his immune system, that he would be back on his feet. We believe and declare your word is true. We ask, Lord, that you would go forth to him right now and heal his body. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. Praise the name of the Lord. We give you all the glory and honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your healing. We pray for Carol Stone, that you would touch her and heal her. We pray for Elizabeth, that you would continue to heal her. We lift up Liz with the breast cancer, Lord. We ask that you would do a miracle in her life, that you would touch her family, touch her father, strengthen her father, Lord. Give him grace and touch Liz, Lord, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. We command that cancer to leave her body. Satan, get your hands off of her. In the name of Jesus, spirit of cancer, we bind you in the name of Jesus. And we command you right now in the mighty name of Jesus to li leave Liz now and go where Christ has prepared a place for you. You have no authority in her. She is a daughter of the king. She has given her life to the Lord. And Lord, we just ask for the mighty hand of God to be upon Liz, that you would sovereignly cover her. And that, Lord, they would look, Lord, and there would be no cancer. They'd cancel the treatments, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray for complete healing upon her breast, complete healing in her lymph nodes, complete healing in every body, every cell in her body, Lord. In the the name of Jesus, Father, we command that healing in the name of Jesus. We command sickness to leave her body in the name of Jesus. Paul Anobly, we command your sickness to go in Jesus' name. We command it to leave Carol in Jesus' name. And we ask, Lord, that you would heal these people right now. We pray, Father, for baby David, that, Lord, you touch him from the top of his head to the soles of his little feet, Lord. We ask that he would breathe. They would be able to uh, take off that uh, breather and that eventually his, he would not be on full oxygen. The Lord, his body would... Uh, recover and grow and develop and his lungs would expand and the, the cells and every part of his body would, would just grow and develop and he would be a miracle, Lord. We ask for a healing upon his body in the name of Jesus. We claim Isaiah 53 over him. You, he was, you, are, you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. And by your stripes, Lord, we are healed in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we pray for Peggy's friend, Leland, uh, the 21-year-old who needs a new heart. Lord, we ask that you pull down those hearts and that you'd give him a new heart in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Give him a new heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we pray for Carolyn, that you would bless her, help her to recover and come back to work. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We pray for Angela. 
Lord, that you would heal her, strengthen her, be with her, carry her, Lord, be with her, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We pray for Christiana and Karen that you would touch them both and heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for Sam's friend, Brian. Lord, we ask for a miracle for Brian. Lord, we ask you to, to stop it, completely cut off that osteomyelitis, that his body would recover, he'd get the right protein, the right nutrients. Lord, give wisdom to the doctors, the nurses, the techs, all those that are taking care of him. And may he get well and be able to come home and live out all his days, Lord, and be strengthened, Lord. Lord, touch him and heal him. We believe that you can heal, and we know you do heal, and we believe that he can be healed in Jesus' name. We pray for Mary Beth Matthews and her dad tonight. We pray, Lord, that you would touch them and heal them. Lord, strengthen them. Let them feel your presence. Wrap your arms around them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We pray for Donna Monifo Hansen, that, Lord, she would hear from you, that you would hold her close. Bless her, Lord. And heal her, Lord, and let her, let her live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. We pray for Gus. Lord, help him to be steadfast. Help him to lean on you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We pray for Paul tonight, our Paul, Robin's husband, that you would bless him and strengthen him. Give the doctors wisdom. Let these two doctors come up with something, Lord. So he can live out all his days that you have for him and he would, they would be good days and he would be a testimony to your goodness. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Pray for Bill Johnson, Paul uh, Ellinger, David. Lord, touch David's kidneys, touch his body, touch Paul's heart, his legs. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. So many, Lord, need you. So many. And Lord, we pray tonight, we thank you for Hudson Valley Community College in Troy, New York, that has made it, um, a determination that they are canceling the vaccination mandates, and we give you all the glory and honor and praise. We thank you, Father, that people are seeing, they're waking up, Lord. They're seeing that these vaccines are ineffective, and in fact, they do damage. And that mandating people to take them and to take boosters is all about money. Father, we ask you to expose, expose, expose. Lord, we ask for expose. We ask that you would expose the truth to your people and that, Lord, you would deliver those who cry out to you, deliver those who've taken these shots, deliver those who've taken these boosters that are sick, deliver them, Lord, help them to cry out to you, Lord, because we know that you're a good God and that you will hear your people, Lord, but we got to cry out to you. Lord, save your people. And Father, we pray that you would restore freedom to this country. We pray that you would bring righteousness to this country. And most of all, Lord, that those who love you will shine like lights in the universe as we hold out the word of life. We give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over us. We pray Psalm 91 over us. We believe your word is true. We pray for deliverance for Veronica in Jesus' name. We pray, Father, that you would touch Lily's back tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Help and heal her, Lord, she fell today in Jesus' name. And we thank you and praise you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for what you're doing. We give you all the glory, all the honor. Let me just read a few scriptures. In the name of Jesus, it says in Psalm 107, send his word and heal them. Talk ye all of his wondrous works. Virtue went out of him and healed them. With his stripes we are healed. Expectation is from him. Youth is renewed like the eagles. Zealous of spiritual gifts. Lay hands on the sick and they recover. And merry heart doth it good like medicine, but a broken spirit dry up the bones. Lord, we ask you to give us a merry heart tonight. Help us to lay hands on the sick, and they will be recovered in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you for praying with me. And I really, we believe that God is our healer, and he will do great things tonight. Amen. amen for sure. All right, Sadell, we'll get the camera going and invite the television audience to join us as we get into our Bible study. Amen. Tonight, let's take our Bibles and turn in the Old Testament to Psalm 63. Psalm 63, 
the power of praise. We're going to see the power of praise in the most difficult of circumstances in the life of David. Power of praise to deliver us from all of the evils that come upon us in this world. And um, we're going to do the backstory on this. I've been enjoying the backstories of these psalms. It really gives us much more depth in it. It's a psalm that David wrote when he was in the wilderness of Judah. He talks about the joy that he has in the fellowship of God and how he praises uh, God and really God delivers him from a very difficult situation. Well, as always, we always want to talk to the author about the book. So let's go to the Holy Spirit and ask for his help, shall we? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to hear your word tonight, to read your word and to study your word. We ask, Father, as, uh, as we read tonight, you would quicken our hearts and help us to understand, take it in our hearts, and help it to rev up that soil in us, Lord. Good soil. Help us to give it out to others. Bless all those who are listening. May they be encouraged tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Psalm 63. Kelly's going to read the uh, 11 verses, then we're going to talk about them, and then get back into the backstory. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. Because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. But those who seek my life to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall glory. But the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. Amen. So here David is telling us that uh, the power of praise has delivered him from his enemies and will continue to deliver them for the rest of his days. Uh, he's writing this very late in his life. Uh, he's now about 68 years of age. Uh, he will pass on into glory in just two more years at the age of 70. He's lived a long time. He has lived a, a wonderful life of praise. Uh, nobody has had the praise life that he has uh, that we see in Scripture. Uh, he's uh, unparalleled. You want to go ahead and take care of our friend there? And um, let's, let's look at the uh, Psalm 63, beginning in verse 1. O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. Notice how he goes right to God and lays it right out there and says, God, you are my God. Did you ever say that to him? Be very personal with him. You are my God. There's no other God. I have no other God but you. It's not money. It's not people. It's not pride. It's not anything in this life. It's you who are my God. And early will I seek you. That word early is very interesting. Uh, some translations have it, uh, diligently will I seek you. And uh, the, the word really can mean both. It means early and it also means uh, diligent. Uh, the word in the Hebrew is uh, the word shachar. And it means either to seek early or to seek diligently, which means get up early, seek him all throughout the day, in the night. And this psalm has become very important to a lot of people who read it first thing in the morning. They get up and they read this psalm uh, because David talked about seeking God early in the morning. When you and I put God first, oh, it makes the rest of the day go so much better. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So he talks about his soul, his whole being is thirsting for him. As the deer pants for the water brook, so my soul longs for you, the psalmist said. And so the song that we sing, Lord, I'm thirsting for you, and my flesh is longing for you. And this is a dry and it's a thirsty land we live in, and it's no 
uh, more and more, even though you talk about a dry land, it's been very dry this summer all over this country and elsewhere as well. Um, a very dry and thirsty land. You look at the, the grass is all asleep, it's all nothing but weeds are prospering. Well, it's just like in life. It's a dry and thirsty land and it seems like sin is prospering and it's just rising up like the weeds. And uh, it doesn't take any water to get these weeds to grow. It doesn't take any effort on our part to make sin grow. It just grows and you have to deal with it. Tomorrow I'm, I'm going to get out and I'm going to do what I've done the last few weeks. I'm going to mow the weeds. I'm not going to mow any grass. There's no grass to grow. I'm going to mow the weeds. And that's a picture of how you and I need to mow the weeds in our lives. Get up early and mow the weeds. Mow the sin. Deal with the sin. Cut it off. Starve it. Cut it down. So he says, early I'm going to seek you. Diligently I'm going to seek you. My soul is thirsting for you. I looked for you in the sanctuary, Lord. I looked for you and I saw your power and I saw your glory. I saw the power that you have. I saw the glory that you have. And that's why I have loved you. And you and I should be grateful for God's power and grateful for his glory. The word for strength uh, is, and, uh, and power is the word Oz. I think there was a uh, Dr. Oz who just got elected. <laughs> I just got Senate a text from him. Did you? He said, anyway, he, uh, that means strength. Is he a Republican? It means, it means might. Yeah, he's Republican. Oh, that's why he's, I got a text. A, he's a Trump person. And... Um, a Trumpite. Anyway, so you teach your... I mean, not personally, you know, power. it's like an a, it comes to your email. And I want to see your glory. So we go into the sanctuary to see his power and to see his glory. He has great power to deliver us from all of our ills and to bring the glory of God upon us. So now he's going to... He's here, he's trusting and he's thirsting in God and he's saying that my soul is satisfied with praise. My soul is thirsting and it's hungry and it needs to be satisfied. It's satisfied with praise. Did you realize that praise satisfies your soul? Did you eat today? Did you have food today? That food satisfied your physical wow, needs? Wow, that's so Praise true. satisfies your spiritual needs. So now let's look at praise. So that's why you have to come out and worship. That's right. Praise, this is worth remembering, praise is food for the soul. Amen. The food for your soul is praise. You know, when I, can I just say something? When I am up here praising, you guys all know this, I'm saying this for the TV audience, uh, other people. When I'm up there like raising my hand, jumping around, I'm really not like, I am mean, a little crazy, but I'm not doing this because I want attention. I'm praising the Lord. I'm giving it all to the Lord. I'm really focusing on Him. You guys are welcome to do that in the, in the thing. Welcome to do, do it at home. When you praise, you're going to feel, it's like exercise afterwards. You feel wonderful. Amen. So now he's saying that, that satisfying your uh, soul is going to be done through praise. Let's read verses 3 through 8 again. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you when I, while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches, because you have been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. So verse 3 says, because of your loving kindness, that's your chesed in the Hebrew, and that's a covenant love that God has for us. It's a wonderful word. It's the word that, um, it's much like a marriage vow between a husband and a wife. And uh, the loving kindness is a contract love that God has for us. And honey, um, can I tell you, you show loving kindness. Uh, hallelujah. It means goodness, kindness. It means faithfulness. God is faithful to us. He says, your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. Praise the so there's Lord. nothing wrong with raising your hands to the Lord in sweet surrender and sweet praise and sweet adoration. He's worthy of that. He gave you life everlasting. He's given you everything you have. He's worthy of your praise. He says, when I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. 
And so perhaps you're awake in the middle of the night. Maybe you have insomnia or the Lord has awakened you to praise and to worship. So meditate about him and uh, love him and, and pray at that time because you have been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. So notice how he keeps himself under the wings of the Lord. So a little, a little hen, uh, the, the hen will have the little chicklets and, and those little babies are going to be right under that wing for protection or the little eaglets uh, on the mother's wing. Or my little uh, um, Sammy. Little Sammy, the new dog who's just been acting up <laughs> in the back there. He hides under my shadow of the wi my He's wings. He's about 13 weeks old and he hides and sidel has got a couple of new... Uh, Do they got, hide got, under you when got you go in the house? Shay and uh, Dora and they're about uh, 10 weeks, 11 weeks old. And so they'll, they'll, if something happens, they will run to you and hide, won't they? They, they, they will run to mommy and uh, they, they run for safety. So my soul follows close behind you. Again, using a dog analogy. When you, know, when you walk around, those little dogs are close behind you. Sammy is right at, your, at your, your, your feet. You have to watch out you don't step on them. So follow close behind. The Lord has often said to me, that if you followed me the way your dogs follow you, right. you wouldn't get into the trouble that you get into, Jerry. Follow close behind me. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me, lifts me up, holds me. So he's saying, I'm satisfied by praise. Praise satisfies my soul. And then he says, I'm going to rejoice in victory. I know the victory is coming, verses 9 through 11. But those who seek my life to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall glory. But the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. So those who seek my life to destroy it, they will go into the lower parts of the earth. They're not going to be saved. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for the jackals. The jackals will eat them. But the king, talking about himself, King David, the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall glory, but the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. Psalms one. are very clear. You, right? uh, you bless the Lord, you're righteous, you'll be blessed. You are not righteous, you will be cursed. So it's a wonderful psalm, and it stands on its own. But after you read so many psalms of praise and glory, sometimes you'd like to see what went on to bring about that psalm. You wouldn't believe the adversity he was going through that gave birth to this psalm. He wasn't just sitting calmly and quietly on a cool night in the temple in Jerusalem, just putting a pen to paper. He was going through tremendous, tremendous agony. It's believed that it was written when he was in the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness a lot. We saw some of the earlier psalms in the late 50s and 60s of the psalms that um, when Saul was after him, he wrote some wonderful songs. But he was then 29 years of age. He hadn't yet, he hadn't yet become king. And yet he was on the lamb because Saul was jealous of him and wanted to kill him. Well, now he's been king for a good long time, and it's been 40 years, and now he's getting ready to pass on. Uh, he's actually 68 years of age now, and uh, the year is 972 B.C. And uh, the background of this story is that there's been trouble in his family. His son Amnon and Tamar have a very unfortunate incident. Um, and Absalom gets involved. His son Absalom takes, gets involved with it. Uh, David had a lovely sister whose name was Tamar, and Amnon, the son of David, loved her. I'm looking at 2 Samuel chapter 13. If you want to turn in your Bible to 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 1. Absalom, the son of David, had a lovely sister. So this is David's daughter. Her name was Tamar. Amnon, the son of David, loved her. He was so distressed over his sister Tamar that he became sick for she was a virgin and it was improper for Amnon to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend named Jonadab and Jonadab devised a plan whereby he could get uh, Amnon to be alone with Tamar and the long story very short that you see in chapter 13, the very sad story is that um, Amnon rapes his sister 
takes her virginity and then he hated her exceedingly because of that. And then uh, and Absalom wanting to justify, to uh, get vengeance for his sister, plans to murder Amnon and he murders Amnon. So now David has a daughter who's been raped. One son has killed the other son. Absalom flees to Geshur at the end of chapter 13. And then uh, finally Absalom comes back to Jerusalem, wants to be forgiven by David. David forgives him, but will not see him. I forgive you, but I will not see you anymore. Well, that's not true forgiveness. I'm not judging David, but that's not really total forgiveness, is it? So uh, now that Absalom is jealous and angry and he begins to sow discord and he tells people as he stands outside the city gate that, you know, where are you from? And I'm from this area or that area. Well, if I were king, I would hear your case. I'd have your case heard. I'd give you justice. David's too busy. So he begins to win the hearts of the people. And the, the people begin to go after him and he begins to now try to come against his father, David. And so he then gets He the, gathers people. He gathers people. He gets, what he does is, this is what happens a lot of times in churches. They gather groups of people and they want the, kind of they want the power for themselves and they gather a group of people then to go against the leader. It's the same kind of, it's an Absalom spirit. That's what they call the Absalom spirit. Uh, as you know, we've had it twice here. Twice we had the uh, second person in command gather people through lies against the leadership and uh, they rebelled. They always think they know better. That's right. They always think they know better than the pastor, better than um, the leader. That's right. You gotta be, you know, and then it's always a disaster. So now the uh, story builds in chapter 15 of uh, Second Samuel and he gets the leading counselor of David, Ahithophel, to join him, Absalom does. And now David has to escape. And this is the setting for this psalm as David has to escape. He leaves his 10 concubines behind to take care of the, of the uh, palace. And um, he starts to flee up uh, the, uh, uh, over the Kidron Valley on up to the Mount of Olives. And as he's doing it, there are all sorts of problems that come his way. Um, and uh, imagine having your son try to come against you and kill you. Terrible. So um, verse 12 of chapter 15, let's read that, honey. Then Absalom sent Ahithophel. Sent for Ahithophel. Oh, sent for Ahithophel, the Gilanite, David's counselor from his city, from Gila, while he offered sacrifices. And the conspiracy grew strong for the people with Absalom continually increased in number. I found this very interesting when I was reading that. Um, and the conspiracy grew strong. Yeah. And when the, when the Absalom spirit is in operation, it's demonic and it has power. We, we, saw, the, uh, we saw that happen here twice and uh, the, the power is unbelievable. People who are innocent and people who seem wise are suddenly just blinded by lies and uh, can't believe it, can't believe the truth and then they, uh, they all want to leave or they want to uh, coalesce into a new work. And in both cases we had, they, they both tried to establish new works. One lasted for a year and died. The other work lasted for about a month and died. But it destroyed uh, much of the church and uh, the people and uh, whatever happened to them, I don't know. But it's very sad, it's, it's a powerful demonic situation and uh, you always pray against an Absalom spirit. And it always uh, it comes uh, close, either the person second in command, someone who's got the ability to uh, marshal the forces against the leader, in this case, his son. And um, so he's now fleeing, he's going up uh, the, uh, and he's just, he's just beside, beside himself. Um, Verse 16, let's read a little bit of the, chapter 15, verse Then 16. the king went out with all his household after him. But the king left ten women concubines to keep the house. And the king went out with all the people after him and stopped at the outskirts. Then all his servants passed before him, and all the Cherethites 
and uh, all the Belathites and the Gideites, 600 men who had followed him from Gath, passed before the king. Then the king said to Ithai, the Gideite, Why are you also going with us? Return and remain with the king, for you are a foreigner and also an exile from your own place. In fact, you came only yesterday. Should I make you wander up and down with us today, since I go? Since I go, I not know where. Return and take your brethren back. Mercy and truth be with you. But Ithahel answered the king and said, As the Lord lives, and as my lord the king lives, surely in whatever place my lord the king shall be, whether in death or life, even there also your servant will be. So he uh, stays with David, and um, others do as well. But David writes this psalm while he's fleeing from Absalom, not knowing if he'll ever be able to come back into Israel again. Imagine fleeing from your own son. And yet he praises God. He blesses God. And he sees the victory that God's going to give him prophetically. He sees it before it takes place. The victory he's going to have over Absalom. And, and faith sees the victory even before it takes place. So you can read Psalm 15 and six, I mean, 2 Samuel 15 and 16 on your own. But that's your backstory, And it's a powerful one. Uh, he didn't just write this on a, on a clear day where he could see forever. It was a very dark day where he couldn't see at all, uh, but he had to trust God. So you praise God. God is going to bless you for your praise. Praise is the power of the food for your soul. You're going to eat tomorrow by, by God's grace. That'll sustain you physically. Make sure you praise the Lord. That'll sustain you spiritually. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful word tonight. Help us, Lord, to feed on your word and help us to remember this week to praise you because praise is food, food for our soul. We ask you to bless all your people, Lord, that have come tonight and have listened tonight and all those who will listen in the future. May the peace of the Lord be with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you and have a blessed evening. Shalom. Shalom. And we're going to continue with our second message. And uh, let's open our Bibles tonight to the Old Testament book of Psalms. We're going to look at Psalm 64. And Psalm 64 is a wonderful psalm by David, oppressed by the wicked, but rejoicing in the Lord. Maybe you're oppressed, but you can and should still rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice psalm in the 64. Lord always. So let's pray, shall we? Yes. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would be with us tonight. And Lord, for those who are oppressed by the wicked, Lord, help us to rejoice in you and help us to be encouraged through this word we're about to hear. In your name we pray, amen. Amen and amen. So David, through his life, has been feeling a lot of oppression from so many enemies within the family, outside, in the nation, outside the nation, so oppression from every quarter. But he was always able to find comfort in and to rejoice in the Lord. So this is a song that he has written and he sends it to the chief musician, as he does the others. And uh, Kelly's going to read these 10 verses of Psalm 64. Hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity, who sharpen their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the blameless, Suddenly they shoot at him and do not fear. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They talk of laying snares secretly. They say, who will see them? They devise iniquities. We have perfected a shrewd scheme. Both the inward thought and the heart of a man are deep. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly they shall be wounded, and he will make them stumble over their own tongue. All who see them shall flee away. All men shall fear and shall declare the work of God, for they shall wisely consider his doing. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and trust in him, and all the upright in heart shall glory. Beautiful, beautiful psalm. Oppressed, but still rejoicing. 
You and I have been oppressed in so many ways and perhaps still are. Maybe you're oppressed financially. I was listening to uh, Marketplace this morning on NPR and the number one concern right now in America is, and actually worldwide, is the economy. That's the main, the main concern. And um, so maybe you're oppressed by the economy. Too much month, not enough dollars, rents going sky high in many areas and food so expensive and it goes on and on. The national grid, their, their, their bills just make your head spin. But trust in the Lord, rejoice in him. Maybe it's physical problems that you have. Maybe you're fighting uh, cancer or some other ailment uh, or COVID or whatever. But uh, whatever it is, you rejoice in the Lord and you look to him to be your deliverer. So the first two verses really deal with prayer for protection. Kelly's going to read the first two verses again and we'll talk about it. Hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity. So his songs are prayer. Praise songs should also incorporate prayer as well. Hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. So preserve my life not only from the enemy, but also even from the fear of it. Uh, we don't go far enough sometimes. We say, well, I don't want to have the enemy destroy me, but... Deal with fear as well. I don't even want the fear of it, Lord. Lord, help me to, be, to stay afloat financially. But go one step further and say, help me, Lord, not to even have fear of the economy. Keep me from COVID and other illnesses, but also keep me from the fear of it, Lord. Because you know, fear can be just as powerful and deadly as the, at the situation itself. And it's been said many times that most things we fear never come to pass anyway. So when you can deal with fear, you've dealt with an awful lot. Doctors tell us that over 70% of your uh, ailments are psychosomatic. They're in your mind. You're fear-induced. If you can deal with the fear, you can deal with a lot of the causes and effects of it. So Lord, preserve my life from fear of the enemy and from the enemy itself. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity. And so this can be the work of people, be the work of Satan, can it? He's always working against us to steal, to kill, to destroy. He's always trying to bring us down. Deliver me, Lord, from those plots of his. Well, then verses three through six talk about the, the problem of these malicious schemes that are coming against us from people and from Satan and whatever source. Look at verses three through six again. Let's look at three and four, first of all. Who sharpen their tongues like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the blameless. Suddenly they shoot at him and do not fear. So he talked about fear of the enemy and now he's talking about the tongue. Could it be that the biggest threat that we have towards us from other people is not that they're going to break our bones or they're going to kill us, but it's going to be the words that they say about us. They're going to speak against us. Fear and tongue stuck out to me. Fear in verse 1, tongue in verse 3. They sharpen their tongue like a sword, bend their bows to shoot their arrows. Bitter words. Those are the things that can kill I us. I was thinking about that. Uh, I won't say anybody's name, but I was thinking about someone who was on the news last year and who was saying on the CNN news, um, all the unvaccinated shouldn't leave their houses. They have no right to leave their houses and this and that. And I, I was looking at the old clips and I thought, well, weren't they wrong? We knew they were wrong. Um, from the rebellion of work, they sharpen their tongue like a sword. They bend their bows to shoot their arrows, bitter words. They were scaring people and they were pitting people against people. Yeah. It's wicked. Yeah. It's wicked when you do it with um, ethnicities, races. This is wicked. They pit people against people. That's what they're talking about. We have a modern version. They were doing the same things. Yeah, exactly. You're, if it was public. You're talking about Dr. Lena Wynn, who's the go-to doctor for CNN, 
she's not even an epidemiologist. She's a, 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 an emergency room doctor, and she was saying people who are unvaccinated should stay home. And um, in any event, that's, that's her opinion. And, but there um, were bitter words, and they were yeah. really feening a fire yep. to the people. Because people yeah. watch that CNN, I don't, but most people do. So you should be do. afraid of people who are unvaccinated, is what they were saying. So they were fearful. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you said, people... You know, I was thinking, I, n I never had that fear. Well, I was upset over my dad dying. I was grieving a lot. So, But that fear um, was really bad. They used that fear. They used fear to control people. Yeah. Look at the, uh, I don't look at Facebook or Twitter or that kind of stuff at all. Um, but uh, once in a while, Kelly will show me some things that uh, the, the kids say in the family or others. And, and uh, boy, when somebody's... Uh, in ill favor, they can just crucify you. Terrible. Uh, in social media, just crucify you. It's so sad, it's so, it's so wicked. Um, I um, actually had a praise today, somebody's, I don't really get involved in other people's business, usually, and never say anything on someone's, but I knew this girl, and she had some real legitimate things to say about um, someone in her family that has hurt her, and I get it, I really do. But I really felt really compelled to tell her not to dishonor her mom publicly. And I knew I was going to get a lot of backlash from it. They were all young. And of course, they ripped me. And I gave the answer. And I gave the scripture. And I'm not denying that there's not hurt, because there really is hurt for the kid. Um, but I, I just rejoice because they apologized to me. I never have that happen. I, that's why I never say anything. But they said because I was so graceful and how nice I explained it to them and I didn't beat them up and that I was looking out for their welfare, that they need to, to beat their mother up, even though they have legitimate claim. They do. There's some very serious things. But to beat the mother up publicly and to dishonor her, I was really concerned. I said, I'm concerned about your life too. And she said, thank you so much. And I apologize. And I hear what you're saying. And I just rejoice. But those words, you know, those kinds of words really can hurt people. And um, sometimes I realized that was good to go to them. It's good to go to someone and speak love to them. Do it all in love. That's right. And pray against those arrows that come against you, that they will fall and, and do no harm at all. Yeah. Uh, let's go on to talk about the malicious schemes against us, verses 5 and 6. They discourage themselves in an they evil... They encourage. Oh, they encourage themselves in an evil matter. They talk of laying snares secretly. They say, who will see them? They devise iniquities. We have perfected a shrewd scheme but the inward thoughts and the heart of man are deep. And both the inward thought and the heart of man are deep. So, Lord, protect me from these schemes, these snares. Help me to be able to see them and to uh, detect them. I talked about going in to Vietnam and how we had to be trained to be careful when we would be in Vietnam in jungle warfare because they would lay mines. And they, not just Vietnam and other areas they're they're laying mines over in in ukraine right now and elsewhere it's just a very common tactic in the military and it's uh, very very hard to detect uh, these mines in fact in vietnam they used to take beautiful german shepherds and they would uh, train them to go before the uh, soldiers so that if there was a mine the shepherd would blow up instead of of the soldier um, lord there are there are snares being laid for me there are mines being laid for me. We don't want to live in fear, but let's be very practical. People are, and sometimes are against us. The devil's against us. And what about His people devices. that, like with this girl, she had some legitimate claim. Her, there's been things that have been done to her that were not right. And, and so she had some legitimate things against her mom. But I, as I'm reading this, um, we don't want it to be a snare. So even though the person maybe has hurt us, what can we do to still minister and be kind or honor that parent or whatever? We have to find ways to do that without putting ourselves out there because the Bible says 
Both the inward thought and the heart of man are deep. God reads our heart, right? God knows our hearts. So Lord, give me protection that I might be able to rejoice in you. He says in the last verses, 7 through 10, he has a prophecy here about divine judgment. I know you're going to give me judgment, Lord. You're going to give me victory. Let's read verses 7 through 10. Then this is where our victory comes from. When we're hurt or when we have a parent who's been nasty to us and we don't want to forgive them. And maybe sometimes we have to have boundaries. But this is where we look and we know God is able. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly they shall be wounded. So he will make them stumble over their own tongue. All who see them shall flee away. All men shall fear and shall declare the work of God. For they shall wisely consider his doing. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and trust in him. And all the upright in him shall glory. All the upright. So we want to be yeah. upright. Mm -hmm. We want to be considered the righteous. And how do we do that? So verse 7, God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Now they were shooting at us with an arrow, weren't they? Verse 3, bend their bows to shoot their arrows, bitter words, uh, that they may shoot in secret at the blameless. Suddenly they shoot at him and they do not fear. Well, so Lord, you shoot at them with an arrow. And, uh, and pray for them. Suddenly they shall be wounded. So he will make them stumble over their own tongue. So their tongues have been devising uh, tongues, evil like a The like tongue a is sword. wicked. That's right. It's wicked. He said in verse 3, sharpen their tongue like they sharpen their tongue like on a sword. Mm -hmm. But here, Lord, I'm going to ask you to uh, make them stumble over their own tongue. So all the weapons they use, Lord, use those weapons against them. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Thus saith Isaiah the Lord. Said. And so that's how it is today. For all these people that we hear all these crazy things and all that's going on, just pray, pray these scriptures. Pray these scriptures. Your prayers are powerful. And all who see them shall flee away. All men shall fear and shall declare the work of God. So I don't want to fear the enemy, Lord, but I do want to fear you. And I want for people to fear you and to honor you all over the world uh, to declare the work of God, for they shall wisely consider his doing. You see, when you and I can consider his doing, what he's up to and what he's doing, then we can fear him, we can praise him, we can follow him. Finally, verse 10, let's, let's, let's close with that. Sure, the righteous shall be glad in the Lord and trust in him, and all the upright in heart shall glory. So the righteous, those who are his, those who have come to him through Christ, who is our righteousness, they shall be glad in the Lord. Maybe not glad in circumstances, maybe not glad in what's going on around the world, but you're glad in the Lord. They'll be glad in the Lord and they'll trust in him. Again, who is your trust in? Who are you trusting in? Not the spouse, not the family, not the, the Lord. money, the Lord. but the Lord. You're trusting in him. The psalmist says some will trust in horses and some in chariots, but we'll remember and trust in the name of the Lord our God. And all the upright in heart shall glory. You're going to glory in him. So David's able to handle fear. He's able to handle his enemies. He's able to handle all situations. And as we look back over the life of David, it was a life basically of, uh, of difficulty. He was a, just a young 16-year-old kid out there taking care of the sheep, minding his own business, and uh, God shows him and um, uh, overlooked the older brothers and shows him. And oh, that began a difficult, difficult time of having to uh, deal with, with one problem and after so another. And so many people think, oh, I wish I was like David. I wish I was chosen. So David, uh, as his first assignment really had, after taking care of sheep, and as he took care of the sheep, that taught him how to take care of people. So as you're a shepherd over sheep, you can become a shepherd over people. Isn't you that see funny? How God I, uses those things to prepare us. Isn't that funny? Because we use our dogs a lot for stories and, and um, mm. analogies, don't we? Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, he, he was able to then move to praise as he took care of the demon spirit on Saul, the king. Saul was, had a demon spirit and... Uh, so he began to uh, praise. Some of these songs perhaps were developed. He developed his musical skills, his writing skills. 
and became a worshiper of God. And then he had to be able to dodge the, the uh, spear of Saul and the sword of Saul as Saul was jealous of him and chased him all over. And then the Philistines were against him and they tried to kill him and he killed so many Philistines. And then he had the Moabites and the Ammonites and the Edomites and then his own family. Uh, he had Absalom against him and the, the problems there. So he was uh, always battling one problem after another. And then he had the problems with wives and children and uh, the affair with so Bathsheba. So for people that you think you have to have a perfect family to serve the Lord? Not at all. Not at all. And he was an ancestor of Jesus. And if you look at the lineage of Jesus, it was no cleaner and purer than your lineage, his human lineage. He had uh, prostitutes and he had uh, uh, people who were evil and on and on it goes. And so we have... Um, our backgrounds are not all have pure. sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Right. No sin is worse than another. But the one thing about David, and I'm going to think about this uh, for the rest of my life, is that he loved God. Yes, he loved God with all of his heart. He spent his days and his nights worshiping Him, loving Him, and uh, praising Him. Well, you can argue he had that affair with Bathsheba. Yeah, he did, and he had the husband killed. He did. And he did some other things that were wrong. But against that, you look at the fact that he loved God and he praised God. The Bible calls, then, uh, the, it, he calls God calls him a man after his own heart. He was. He, and so for you, my friend, I hope you know the Lord. We're going to give you a chance to receive him. Kelly's going to lead us in a little uh, sinner's prayer in a moment. And uh, give your heart to Christ. And, and uh, you've, you've sinned, I've sinned, we've all sinned. All sinned but, and fall short of the glory but, but of God. Love him. Get up in the middle of the night when you have to, and, and praise him and thank him. May it always be about just loving him. And uh, did we find, did we, yep. did we lose our, there it is. You know, the, the uh, salvation is easy, as easy as ABC. I like to keep things simple. A, B, C, A, for admit that you're a sinner. B, believe that Jesus died on the cross. Amen. And rose again as the payment for your sins. And C, confess Jesus publicly. So Kelly's going to give us the ABCs and then give us a chance to pray. Amen. I know. I'm just thinking. The Bible says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If these scriptures speak to your heart and you're ready to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please pray with us. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I admit I am a sinner. I admit I am a sinner. And I repent of my sins. And I repent of my sins. I believe Jesus died for my sins. I believe Jesus died for my sins. And was raised from the dead. And was raised from the dead. As payment for those sins. As payment for those sins. I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for my new spiritual life. Thank you, Lord, for my new spiritual life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. Find a church in your area that's faithfully teaching his word, and then you'll be faithful to attend it. You'll grow, you'll mature, and you'll be a blessing to them as they are a blessing to you as well. If we can help you here at Reach Out, just email us at reachoutchurch at gmail.com, and you can also go online and, uh, and have fellowship. We have the whole Bible taught verse by verse at reachout. Uh, fellowship.com. That's reachoutfellowship.com. God bless you. And until the next time, shalom. shalom. And let's close with a wonderful stirring number. Let's stand and sing, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. What a wonderful has been brought. Since Jesus came into my heart. 
my soul for which long I have sought since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll since Jesus came into my heart from thy wandering and going astray since Jesus, Jesus came into my heart and my sins which were many are all washed away since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart it's a joy of my soul like the sea billows roll since Jesus came into my heart Possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure Since Jesus came into my heart And no dark clouds of doubt now my pathway obscure Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart my soul like the sea billows roll since Jesus came into my heart I shall go there to dwell in the city I know since Jesus came into my heart and I'm happy so happy as onward I go since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart Floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll Since Jesus came into my heart Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Praise the Lord. And finally, brethren, be complete, be of good comfort, be of one mind. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the commission, communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Shalom. Shalom.